Across the UK, across continental North America, and around the world on the internet, by webcast and by podcast, my name is Howard Hughes and this is The Unexplained. Um, we've saved the best till last year. We had a, a story about a bridge that involved a ghostly familiar, people perhaps uh, returning from the next life by crossing the bridge and then coming back again, all of that fascinating material. This is about a tunnel and a deeply haunted one. I think anybody who's lived in Kyoto for any length of time who's not Japanese will know about this one or have heard of it. Anybody who's Japanese from Kyoto knows about the Kiyotaki Tunnel. Um, and strangely enough, there are quite a lot of tunnels in, in Japan that seem to have ghost stories. So it's, it's maybe similar to the wells. The tunnels seem to have some connection. But this, this particular one, um, it was built between 1927 and 1928. And it's very close to a, a very famous area of Kyoto called uh, Arashiyama. Lots of tourists. It's a beautiful area. Uh, you can take boat trips down the river. You can climb up the mountain and feed monkeys. It's got lots of uh, heritage temples, bamboo forests. It's, it's one of the most visited areas in Arashiyama. Um, but further down the road is this tunnel that maybe not so many people go to. Um, and it was originally a railway line um, until 1944. But it was built in 1927 to 28, and it was built by um, what you could call slaves, but legally unpaid workers. Um, working conditions were apparently very bad, and quite a lot of people died during the construction of the tunnel. And it is said that some of the ghosts of those workers do roam, roam the tunnel. Um, but there's lots more things happen there. The tunnel apparently... Officially, you would, you would find that it's, it's said that it's nearly 500 metres long, but the report is that it's 444 metres long. Um, now, the number four, um, different, Japan has three different alphabets, uh, hiragana, katakana, kanji, and the kanji for four um, can be pronounced in the same way as the kanji for death. So the number four is unlucky, and it's claimed that the tunnel is 444 metres long, uh, which oh, gives us... so that this is the tunnel uh, of yeah. death, but multiplied a number yeah. of times. Yes, definitely. Um, around the tunnel is woodland. Um, it's said to be a, a known suicide spot, and people have reported a woman's scream coming from the woods around the tunnel, which uh, could be the ghost of somebody who's committed suicide in the woods. Mm. Um, and there is one very, very disturbing story, isn't there, about a woman who throws herself onto cars? Yes. Yes. Um, and basically, um, it's a one-way tunnel. So there are traffic lights at each end. And uh, it is said that um, there is a woman in white who stands by the edge of the tunnel and um, I did hear one report where a cyclist um, was coming up to the tunnel entrance and he saw a car had crashed and it turned out that it was one of his, his neighbours and so he got talking to him and um, his neighbour explained that he saw the white woman by the edge of the tunnel and he tried to avoid her and crashed into the side of the tunnel. Um, but it's been reported that the traffic lights can change suddenly whilst cars are in the tunnel to cause accidents. Um, some people report that they feel the car being buffeted by winds, and when they get out of the tunnel, they see handprints on the, on the bonnet, the hood of the car. It's, it's reported that if you look in your mirror and you see your dead self in, in the mirror, that you're going to die in horrible circumstances a few days later. Um, what do you mean if you look into your, your interior mirror in the car? Yes, <sighs> yes, yes. I'm not. Do, uh, do people avoid this tunnel or do they have to use it? There is actually a bus route that goes through it as well. Um, I mean, it's, it's even said that if you, uh, I don't, if, you, if you arrive at a tunnel and the traffic lights are green, apparently the warning is that you shouldn't go in because it's the spirits welcoming you into the tunnel. What you should do is wait for it to turn to red and then turn to green again. Um, I don't think that's very good for traffic discipline, though, is it? <laughs> well, 
Well, you know that. Um, <laughs> you'd, have, you'd have three three or six points on your licence here for doing that. <laughs> you know, I, I, there, there, is, there is also a story that it's reported that people say that if, if you go through it and then go back, people report that it feels longer going one way than the other. And I, I've spoken directly to somebody who did go through on a bicycle, and, he's, and one of the first things he said was, yeah, it seemed longer when I was coming back. Um, I wonder if that's just psychological or if that is some kind of, I don't know, time compression effect. The only thing I can think of, there is, it is slightly on a hill. Ah. So it could, it so could it, well be... I um, got you. So one way is more difficult than the other. It could be that, yeah. Um, <laughs> and pe- people have reported feeling sick and nauseous, but it's a very narrow tunnel. So it could be car fumes paper, making people feel sick. But uh, who knows? <laughs> the Kiyotaki Tunnel. Boy, great stories, Philip, and stories that we wouldn't have heard uh, otherwise. So, listen, thank you very much indeed. Um, now, I mean, it's only fair that is there anything you would like to publicise your books, uh, the the walks that you that you host? Anything you want to give some publicity to? I put out um, some books. Uh, the books are titled Hidden Paths, Walking Historical Kyoto. Three of those books out at the moment. Some of the places that we've talked about today are in those. Um, Along with some really, did you take all of those photographs? Yes, yes. So I, I go to all of these locations. I take all the all the photographs, do all the research before going. Um, occasionally, when I'm out doing the walks, I'll come across something else that I didn't find. So I take some photographs of that location and, and do some research on that. Um, there's a website which is just very simply hiddenpathskyoto.com, and that's got links to the books which are available online in ebooks or paperback. Um, and each each book has about three or four different walks, and some of them are in the city. Some of them take you up a mountain, uh, outskirts of the city, and, and um, some, some well-known places. But I, I try to um, highlight places that the tourists tend not to go to. Mm. Well, no, I would love to do all of that. One thing that's put me off in the past, though, going to Japan, despite my fascination with the place and the fact that I studied it when I was at school, Um, I've always been concerned that all the signposts (laughs) may be in Japanese and I wouldn't be able to ride the subway because I wouldn't know where I was going. Um, Is it it that difficult for foreigners? I would say no. As a tourist, a lot of the signs are now in English. Obviously, we've got the Olympics here this year, so even a lot of the convenience stores are now printing the names of the food in the wrappers in English. And um, if you go to a restaurant, you can usually get an English menu uh, or photographs in the menu you can point at what you want um and i think a a lot of um people are um trying to understand use more english as well Mm. uh, i mean i'm not saying that you know the world should speak english (laughs) (laughs) that's 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 not what i'm saying you it's just that it always struck me as being very difficult for people going there but but what a cultural feast if you do Uh, hey listen philip i know it's evening time for you you've got to get to bed and get to work tomorrow so i've got the rest of my day looking uh, you know staring you have traveled in time you've time traveled in front of me Uh, But whatever. Philip Jackson, listen, thank you so much in Kyoto. Please stay listening to my show, and thank you for doing this. It's been a pleasure, Howard. Thank you very much. Philip Jackson, please give me your thoughts about him. Some amazing stories, I thought, from Japan, from the city of Kyoto, that was the original city in Japan before Tokyo. Uh, Astonishing material, and I've never heard any of that before. I hope you enjoyed that all the way Is it 10,000 miles from London? Is it 12,000 miles? I'm not sure. Uh, But it's still a long way. And that time difference of, what, nine hours between there and here, that is astonishing. That is real, (laughs) legitimate time travel, I guess. Uh, More great guests in the pipeline as we go through February and into March here on The Unexplained. So until next we meet, my name is Howard Hughes. I am in London. This has been The Unexplained Online. And please, whatever you do, please stay safe. Please stay calm. And above all, please stay in touch. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.